So this time, not only is this not the video I said it was going to be, this isn't even the video I said I was going to replace that video with. This is just a completely different video altogether. I originally had a scripted video planned for this week, but I'm just not happy with how the script's coming together. It's got the sort of like length I'd like it to have, but it doesn't feel cohesive and I wouldn't have enough time to fix that and make the video as well. So I decided to do something else. And then I bought a CNC machine. Okay, I guess I'm building that. The video this was originally supposed to be will come out sometime soon. The video I said I was going to replace it with will also come out at some point. I don't know when anymore. I've actually got videos planned all the way up until the end of the year and I now don't have space because I did an extra one which is this. So we'll just see. <laughs> so if you remember last year I got a 3D printer and they're actually kind of constructed quite similarly. So I thought this wasn't going to take me too long and then it took me about three hours including numerous mistakes which you kind of won't see. You'll every now and again see me remove the entire thing off the table and then bring it back. And every time I've removed it off the table, it's when I was fixing a mistake. I've actually made a mistake quite early on where I put these like T-shaped pieces on the linear rods and I put one of them on upside down and I don't notice that for about an hour. So I eventually, when it becomes relevant, have to fix that, which was infuriating. The first two hours of building this was me unboxing it and then just building the base. And then I spent one more hour on a different day and got the entire rest of the machine built, including taking it apart at some points to fix things. I do know to some extent why it took me so long the first time. It was mostly because I just wasn't entirely prepared. It was annoying. I was hoping, like I said, that it wouldn't take me this long. I watched a review of it that said, oh, if you can put IKEA furniture together, this isn't that bad. And I'm like, okay, I've built 3D printers before, it should be okay, and it wasn't. It was mostly fine, I'm kind of playing up how bad it was. There's, like I say, a number of times I made like little mistakes. Like for some reason, there's a threaded rod that is like what the motor runs through essentially. I built that through the machine and started trying to put it together and I'm like, I could just run it through after I built it. Why am I doing this? So I just take it out and build it outside of the shape rather than struggling. There's a lot of little times when I'm like, I do things in a way that causes me to struggle until I realize I could just not do that and then I do it a different way. There's also a number of times when like, to some extent, like I say, the issues that I found were not always necessarily that I'm bad at instructions or because the instructions are bad. The instructions aren't great, to be honest. Like the unit has feet on it, which I didn't notice until afterwards and it required me to like flip some parts later on stuff like that the instructions aren't great but it's not always problems like that some of it is problems of i'm trying to film so i'm sitting kind of awkwardly doing it like i was actually knelt on the floor for like three hours building this which wasn't the most comfortable position and also like i'm trying to do things on the table so everything's like arm's length away from me so some of it might look a bit awkward like one part that really looks awkward is when i'm putting the top in place it looks weird the way I'm doing it, and eventually I do just take it off the table and do it easier. Oh, I will also mention that when I put the base on, if you pay close attention, you'll notice it's not straight. At the time I was just like, I'm just going to build it and then I'll fix it later. I have since fixed it. You just loosen the screws and twist it a little bit and screw them back in and it's fine. I was actually planning originally to end this video with just a little like test cut. Just something nice to show off, just like my logo or something. And then I realised I don't have any wood, I just have no pieces of wood. I did also think that it came with some like scrap pieces of stuff to test with. I don't know why I thought that, I just thought I did. The 3D printers come with small amounts of filament so you can test them, so I thought this would come with something. I'm just wrong. There's a couple of things I would think this should come with, and I think other versions of it do actually come with them, is that it doesn't have any end stops at the moment. So you can just keep telling it to go in a direction that it can't move anymore and it will just grind forever. That's not the best. So just a couple of end stops would have been nice. And like I say, I think other versions of this do come with those. They're also, from what I understand, quite cheap. So I could just buy some and fit them myself. But I feel like I really shouldn't have to because they are like two, three quid each. It wouldn't have been the end of the world to like include those in it, but they didn't. What they did include though, that I didn't expect, is the offline controller, which earlier models didn't come with, and this one does, and apparently makes it like infinitely more usable. Because it means you don't actually have to be attached to a computer to do it, you can put jobs on a micro SD card 
I'd use it like that rather. So I was actually pretty happy with it came with that. I didn't expect it to and it did and I was pretty happy. It also means you can actually control it manually which you'll see me do to like check that things are moving around the way I want them to. And like everything moved right as far as I can tell at least. Everything worked straight away which I was pretty happy with. There's little bits of it that I don't like about the design. The side pieces, you have to measure them 375 millimeters away from the back and that's where they have to like screw in. You could have just actually put threaded holes in the aluminium extrusion in the correct places and just screwed it into the extrusion instead of making me measure and then using like T-nuts to hold it in place. Like that's just kind of awkward. It didn't work out too bad. I managed to get them in in the right places, at least as far as I can tell. I might be off a little bit, which I won't find out really until I actually try and use it. But at least as far as I can tell, I did it right. But there's just little things like that where I'm like, if you'd have done it this way, then it would be a hell of a lot easier to build. It's obviously cheaper to not do that. And like, it's a very cheap machine. I got this even cheaper as well because it was on uh, sale on Prime Day. So I got it for like 180, which is about the same as I got my 3D printer for. But it's usually about 230, something like that. Also, there's some couplers. The first coupler I installed, I installed correctly on the first try, and that was actually a problem because I should have paid closer attention and then I would have noticed that the couplers are actually bigger on one side than they are on the other and I, like I say, just didn't realise. So because I did the first one right, I didn't pay close enough attention and did the second one wrong, which required me to take the entire motor off and redo that. It was really awkward, but it's not like the end of the world, it wasn't like the hardest job in the world. Actually, that reminds me, the screws for those couplers were an absolute nightmare. I don't know if it was bad tolerances on the screws or a cheap bit that I was using, but the actual bit would like get stuck in the screw and I would have to like take pieces apart to pull them out. For most of the part that wasn't a problem, but with those screws and the couplers being so small, it was a nightmare because you couldn't like get a grip on anything to do it. The way I had to do it was I had to actually screw it all the way through so it would come out the other side, then try and screw it back in in reverse. It was really weird, but it was the only way I could work out how to get it to loosen a bit. Besides that, it was actually pretty simple to put together. It wasn't that bad, especially the second half. The first night took longer. Part of that was unboxing it. Part of that was I didn't have the pieces ready, so I was like searching for all the stuff every time I went to a new step in the instructions. Before I started recording it on the second night, I went through and organised every single piece. And then when it came to the second night, it was just a matter of grab the next bag and use the next bag to build. and. It's really how I should do everything, because it, it makes the job so much easier. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. It'll be fun to get to use. I just, um, for one thing, need to work out what I want to use it on. And for another, need to work out where I'm going to put it. I'd like to put it next to my 3D printer, but my wife currently uses that space to do paintings and stuff. So I'm not going to, like, take it off her, but I also don't know where I'm going to put it. So we'll see. But I'm, like, happy I got it. This was the next thing I wanted to buy. The... Thing I probably want to get next that I might get like next year or something is maybe a resin printer but I don't feel comfortable doing that because I don't really have space for it. They require like a lot of cleanup and stuff and the fumes on those are poisonous. I don't think they're exactly poisonous but they're not nice at the very least. And also I'd like a laser cutter which I can actually get a laser cutter attachment for this but that's incredibly dangerous so I won't be doing that for a while. I would probably have to buy an actual laser cutter which would be a ridiculous amount of money. Or I could get the laser attachment for this but at that point I'd want an entire enclosure for it and when I'm buying an enclosure and the laser attachment maybe it'd work out cheaper to just buy a laser cutter but I don't know. When it came to the wiring most of it was fine. I did have some problems because I couldn't tell which was the X, the Y and the Z. I only say that because like in school you taught that X, Y, Z is X is horizontal, Y vertical and Z is depth but in a lot of like real world applications they flip the Z and the Y, so Z becomes the like vertical and Y becomes the depth, which is how it is on this. But some places also flip the Z and the X, and that one was not clear. I was pretty clear on which was the Y, because that one was pretty obvious, but the Z and the X I wasn't clear on at all, so I wish it had been clearer. It was also an absolute nightmare getting the wires in the spindle, because they're like, I can't remember what they're called, they're called like spades or something? I can't remember exactly. But they sort of like little like clips that you would usually slide over a piece of metal and like crimp in place. The issue is these are like mostly crimped already. So getting them in, because they're especially really small, was really difficult because it was like nothing to grip onto to push. So it was really difficult to actually get them in place. But yeah, that's about it. So thanks for sticking around. Bye. Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs and Koopy Vegeta. 
You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, check out my TikTok and Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to all of my channels. If you want more, you can watch my last video now, but if not, then thanks for sticking around. Bye.